Today we're talking taxes. You know those things that the people who can't afford the good accountants have to pay? Now this is one of a three part series breaking down the large bill that Democrats just negotiated, reforming taxes, healthcare, and green initiatives. Now this bill makes two major changes to America's tax policy, a minimum corporate tax rate and boosting IRS funding. Now there was this whole third piece about closing the carried income tax loophole, but that was tossed out at the cost of getting Kirsten Sinema's vote. At this point though, can we still call it a loophole when a majority of congress is literally voting to not fix it? Eh, doesn't matter. First, the big one, a minimum corporate tax rate. Now corporations, they don't pay an income tax, they pay an outcome tax. When the government collects taxes from you or me, they look at our papers and ask how much money we took in, and then they take a percentage of that. When the government collects taxes from a corporation on the other hand, well they look at how much the company took in, then they sweep away all the money the company spent on itself, and then finally they tax what's left. Now this is huge for Amazon and other large companies tax avoidance strategies. You see, if I'm a corporation, I can either pay corporate taxes on profits, or I can find a business relevant way of spending that money, lowering those profits to zero. For more information, here's Jeff Bezos explaining why Amazon is an incredibly unprofitable corporation. Let's talk about profit, or in your case, the complete lack thereof, famously. <laughs> it's kind of like we built this lemonade stand you know, 20 years ago. The lemonade stand has become very profitable over time, but we also uh, decided to use our skills and the assets that we've acquired over time to open a hamburger stand and a hot dog stand and so on and so on. So we're in, in investing in new initiatives. Yeah, Amazon makes a whole bunch of income, but they turn around and spend it all on themselves. For all intents and purposes, the company isn't making a profit despite that massive income. That's why Amazon the company hasn't been paying any taxes. Now what this bill does is give corporate accountants a sort of a choose your own adventure tax filing. You can either pay the 28% corporate tax rate that we currently have on your profits, or if that taxable return falls below 15% of your corporate income, you stop paying a 15% income tax. Whichever is the more expensive of the two options, well, that's the bill you're going to end up footing. Now this is a huge, huge pivot for corporate taxation, and would see the first corporate income tax in United States history. It would have more of an impact than even tripling the corporate tax rate because hey, 10% of zero is just as much as 100% of zero. Now, of course, some are worried that this will dissuade corporations from investing in themselves and instead push corporations into booking higher profits. Booking higher profits would see things like more stock buybacks, more dividend payments, or just pocketing the cash. If I'm paying taxes on it no matter what, well, I might as well distribute it amongst myself and investors instead of flying some dude into outer space. You bet that was a tax write down. Now the second thing this bill does is fund the IRS. Now this might sound like an expense because, well, the word fund is in it and we're giving money to a government agency. But this is one of the huge pay fors of the current bill. So how does handing the IRS more money generate money? Well, it's a real takes money to make money sort of situation. You see, they theorize that a $1 increase in the spending on the IRS's enforcement activities will result in $5 to $9 increases in revenue. Jerome Powell, you better start updating your resume because I think we just found a new money printer. Now that is a 500% to 900% return on investment. So how are we going to start generating returns that would make even Bitcoin blush? Well, unfortunately, people don't tend to report their tax evasion to the government, so we don't have the most accurate numbers on how much money that the government is actually leaving on the table each year when tax season comes around. 
Most estimates play this sort of number at between half and three quarters of a trillion dollars per year. Now there are a few things to think about when we're breaking down this large number. First, wow, that is a lot of theoretical revenue that we're not collecting because we lack the proper auditor numbers. We are still leaving plenty of illegally withheld money on the table after this bill comes into place, but there's plenty of delicious low hanging fruit to chow down on. Now, Second, and a little more technically nuanced, who's getting audited? Now, This is where things can get a little social justice-y. Let's just say I hand you a list with a thousand tasks that you need to get done and you know there's no way you're going to be able to get to all of them. Well, you're probably going to do as many of the easy ones as possible and let the super difficult ones just sort of float to the bottom uncrossed off. Same situation with the IRS. Now this could be interpreted as particularly socially detrimental because it's much easier to audit someone who has little to no assets than someone who's wealthy. You see, auditing the wealthy, well, it's quite the luxury. You deducted this, made this from stocks, ooh, this from art sales and offshore account income. Wait, wait, your dog is a dependent? You know what? Screw this. I'm going to audit that minimum wage hardware store employee who underreported his income. Pretty simple. I can verify his numbers with the business's tax documents and it's going to take all of two minutes to figure out what's going on. We got him boys, justice has been served. You see, underreporting, five times higher amongst people making more than $10 million annually than those making under $200,000. Senate Democrats when writing this bill have said that none of these funds are going to go towards the IRS auditing people or increasing taxes on anyone making under $400,000 a year. Now the argument is, we're not really raising taxes here, just making sure that high income earners stop illegally withholding their income from the IRS. So those are the two changes that this bill would make to the tax code. Join me hopefully soon for a final episode, the environment. After all, this is called one of the largest environmental investments in decades. Still have to finish writing that one though. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I created a complete playlist of my coverage of this bill so you can understand exactly what's in it. Link over here to that. Thank you to my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, click on the link in the description to join this group of exceptional individuals. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.